every now and then they get a little, they get a little bit uh, rambunctious, but um, those of us that are pet lovers, I think we can roll with that. Um, so here's our slides. And we're gonna take you through a little bit of a journey of the work that we're gonna be doing with chapters this year. And this, I know some of this slide is a little bit busy. So I wanna kind of dial into this, this image here on the left and tell you a little bit about what's coming in the webinar today. And then we'll dive a little more into who Ivy and I are, and then get into each of these different uh, events that we're gonna be you know, co-facilitating and hosting through chapters. So you know, when we work with Inspire Citizens, you know, we talk about the work we do as a ecosystem for holistic global citizenship. And again, we'll be unpacking that quite a bit today, but just to give you a little bit of an overview, you know, we have work that is, student facing in particular, but also, you know, there's educators that come into that space and whole school communities, including the parents. We often call that our change makers or our student leadership programs. We also um, are looking, we do a lot of work in what's called the critical media literacy space with what we call eco media. And Ivy's gonna really um, help us to understand what that is over the next hour or 45 minutes that we're talking with, with you guys. And then we also work directly kind of with teachers on, on unit design and on uh, enhancing units. So we look at how do we, how do we take holistic global citizenship and sort of make it the why of what we're doing and the through line of, of our sort of teaching and learning to build experiences student-centered as much as possible, but inquiry, project-based learning, but even standards-based that you know, connects to things like what we care about in the world and then how can we take our learning and do something with it? And that's what we call empathy to impact. We're also gonna talk about, this is brand new, and we've been doing this with schools for a long time, whole school transformations, uh, You know, sometimes one to three year, usually about three years of work where we work on really, again, that through line being holistic global citizenship. And what that does nicely is it can take all of the initiatives that are going on on campus that sometimes we're overwhelmed by and really lock that into a deeper purpose, right? And we'll show you some of the, really interesting work we're gonna be doing in that space that includes a really in, a great self-discovery tool for your school. And lastly, Ivy's gonna be hosting a Learning Beyond set of talks and conversations um, that we'll, we'll talk to you about that sort of looks at the future of education. We look at trends, we look at uh, you know, where things are going in terms of what's happening in the world now, uh, where we think the things are going, whether it's through economics, whether it's through um, you know, sustainability, and we're going to be bringing in some experts uh, in the field to sort of unpack and discuss what's going on in those spaces. So that's, that's sort of the overall ecosystem that we're doing. And Ivy, I'm just going to kind of pass it over to you to just introduce yourself and talk a little bit about, um, yeah, I guess let's just start with you. Uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, thank you, Shono, for having us, uh, for inviting us, and also thank you, everyone, for uh, being here uh, with us for the next hour. Um, I'm uh, I'm the Eco Media Director and Lead Facilitator uh, at Inspire Citizens, uh, and my background is um, um, in the cross section of well-being, uh, happiness, uh, and deep ecology. And so, you know, all of my educational work uh, focus on the two things, uh, you know, the way I understand, you know, nature and well-being is they're so interconnected. Uh, and, you know, the way we try to uh, make people, you know, think differently about holistic well-being and our connection with nature is through very creative and skillful means, you know, such as art, design, you know, future thinking, uh, which you will hear more um, in the um, in the following, uh, uh, you know, parts. And guys, just to give you some background too, and myself, um, I was a classroom teacher for about fifteen years, grade four, grade six, and grade eight. Um, and I think that's also something that really resonates with a lot of the work that Inspire Citizens does with our partner schools and educators and students is, you know, we, we've, we still do teaching in the classroom. We do a lot of co-facilitation still. We do a lot of student-facing work, learning labs and so on. But we do want you to understand as we walk through all of these things today that, you know, we still wear the teacher hat. And part of our mission is not only to provide, you know, the proof of concept of what you see in the images on this page, for example, of what does it really look like on the ground? Right, but also that idea of teacher well-being, and um, you know, we know that things can get overwhelming at times. 
And one of the things that we pride ourselves on is making sure that we come in in ways that enhances, makes the work more joyful, um, and also takes the pressure off, actually, because we know when kids are when kids are motivated, when they know that they're making a difference in the world through their learning, often the uh, you know the classroom is just there's just back to that word. It's just so joyful and fun. And I think you know the meaning that can come out of that is really powerful. So that's really my background. And we started Inspire Citizens about five six years ago out of the classroom, and since now we're now we're talking to you guys through chapters. So we're, again, we're very happy you're here. One of the things we've been asking a lot is, and we actually took this idea from a famous podcast in the States uh, from Baratunde called How to Citizen. And that idea was based on taking the word citizen and, and you know, uh, making it a verb ostensibly. So we, you know, we being that we work with holistic global citizenship and that we're, you know, that we work in diverse communities that have mission statements that are really built. We have that why, and I think we have that what, when we talk about global citizenship in our schools. But the thing that we're going to hopefully be able to work with you in these chapters, opportunities, and experiences is the how. And that's something that we are going to be unpacking all throughout the year, and hopefully with you guys as we have experiences to move forward. So today is a big focus on that word, how. And one last piece of that, when you go to our website, our homepage looks like this. And there's a couple words here I wanna also bring out is that idea of holistic global citizenship. Ivy, do you wanna talk briefly about the inner and the outer sustainability piece of how we see global citizenship? Um, so you may hear the word quite often uh, when talk because, you know, uh, we, we try to, you know, have a holistic approach to the things that we do. And when it comes to, you know, global citizenship, and especially uh, recent years, you know, with the popularity of the SDGs. Um, but then, you know, we realize, you know, it can't just be the goals, it can't be, you know, just the targets um, and, you know, the concept of global citizenship. Um, beyond, you know, the projects, the action we do, there is also, you know, this mindset shift that's crucial to make, you know, that outward action and impact possible. So that's why, you know, we frame and unpack, you know, this um, into inner sustainability and outer sustainability, uh, which is actually very straightforward, right? The, out, the outer uh, sustainability is what we do, what we consume, what action do we take, you know, can make ourselves, you know, our community and, you know, the planet more sustainable. But also, you know, inwardly, our thoughts, you know, our values that we hold, we believe in, um, you know, our patterns, um, et cetera. So the inner landscape also needs to be sustainable. So then, um, you know, then we can take truly sustainable actions. And at the bottom, what you'll notice is also the inspire students, educators, schools, and stories. And those are, those are kind of like pillars in the work that we do. They are interdependent. They are interconnected. When we work with schools, we work with educators, we work with students, we, we acknowledge that. But we also do have sort of specific areas of focus where we do have student facing work and we do work, you know, educator facing and we do look at strategic visioning and planning through the futures thinking work in the whole school roadmap to then collect the stories, the vignettes, the podcast, right? We have the mailing list, all of the ways that we, you know, are sharing that proof of concept that again, what's happening on the ground in schools and classrooms in a way that you know ties it all together around what Ivy was just, just talking about with inner and outer sustainability. So let's get into the first piece. This is actually something that we're gonna be hosting together with chapters in November. Uh, this is focused around student leadership, right? Or student change maker programs. This can, be real, this can kind of show up in a lot of ways. It can show up in a classroom, it can show up in a service club, it can show up in <clears throat> student councils, it can show up in CAS programs personal projects, really, it, it, student change makers, in a, you know, in our perfect world, this is happening all the time in our schools when we talk about global citizenship. Again, this becomes the why and what we are trying to get to, you know, to see in the kids and in, in, in the type of their deeper learning. And Ivy and I are going to be on campus uh, working with student change makers from Frankfurt that I'll be talking to you about in just a second. Ivy, do you want to briefly talk briefly about the ego to eco mindset? 
And since earlier we talked about, um, you know, the crucial shift that needs to happen um, um, with our, you know, with the inner side. And, and then uh, ego to eco, actually, you know, the first time I heard, uh, I heard of this is from Otto Shama, uh, the founder of Theory U, which is a very, very powerful, you know, transformative uh, learning tools for organizational change and also for system uh, change. Um, and, you know, it also really fits the work we do. So you can, you know, see the two um, visuals um, on the screen, right? The, the triangle one, you know, is an ego, um, which we are very, very familiar with. And we encounter almost every day, every minute in our surroundings. You know, it's always about me. It's always about I. So it's very, you know, ego centered. And then to fulfill, you know, the maximum interest of that I, you know, a lot gets sacrificed, like our social and, you know, economic, well, our social and ecological well-being, and including our own well-being, actually. But then, you know, what if we can imagine uh, this differently? You know, what if it's it's ego? Well, you know, what if it's eco oriented so then you know we can expand you know our consciousness from that very very narrow self to the bigger um, ecosystem which is the whole planet right including uh, people living in other countries you know from different cultures and also the non-human living beings the species that we share our habit and habitat all together on this planet uh, to yeah to facilitate, you know, that ego to eco um, consciousness shift. And uh, like, you know, I said in the beginning that we have many, many pathways uh, to achieve that, um, you know, mindset shift. And the um, workshop um, at Frankfurt in November um, is one of the project, you know, to, to serve that goal. And we're going to use this weekend too to, to bring in some creative ways to make sure that we're having a very well-rounded experience. So again, we'll have a Friday night, um, what we're going to call kind of a networking party. For those of you that sort of know what a job alike is like, it's going to be quite casual in a way for us to share all of our experiences. Again, whether we're classroom teachers, administrators, service coordinators, et cetera. And then we're going to really dive into the hands-on experience with the students. And those students you'll see in a second, they're gonna take us through a change maker action plan and all of the tools and resources that are a part of that. And then Sunday, we are going to kind of embed uh, reconnection with nature, getting into some mindfulness spaces about compassionate leadership, mindful leadership, et cetera, asking ourselves what we can learn from nature about ourselves. And that's also gonna come out in the eco media work that we're doing that we'll share in a little bit. And as we, you know, just quickly to show some pictures and go through, you know, when we think about student leadership, a lot of what we're looking at is really just we want the kids to feel this way. You know, they see the world, they feel empowered, they have the, the understanding, the meta language, the understand, the deeper understanding, the way to take action, the skills and dispositions to do so. And this is kind of a roadmap of what will happen at that workshop with the students. In Frankfurt, the students actually use this as part of the second part of the um, event that they hosted this past year, where they started by running roughly about 40 different workshops around sustainable thinking, right? We looked at elements of nature, the future of economics, such as donut economics workshops. We looked at compassionate and generative listening and society and intercultural competence. The kids also ran workshops on well-being and technology. And then after they did all of these, these workshops, these interactive workshops for the attendees, they then went through and they took people through a change maker action plan that incorporated all of these different tools, you know, to share both to the educators and the students that attended the conference. So the ego to eco conference or the ego to eco workshop will also be something where the kids will help you if you're visiting to unpack all of these fantastic tools. And another piece that we wanted to share with you is they've we've come up at Frankfurt in this work with a, a profile of a holistic global citizenship citizen or a profile of an inspired citizen and change maker. And Ivy, do you wanna take a minute or two to kind of talk us through this? And um, so this visual also, you know, also follows our inner to outer sustainability. Uh, so, you know, we will start zooming in into the core, um, uh, the most inner circle where you can see 
right? I am a meditator, um, you know, which means I I know who I truly am, right? I can slow down, you know, I can um I can manage to pay my attention well, being reflective, uh, you know, being mindful of you know my thoughts, my speech, my action. But also, you know, I, I am an artist, especially, you know, when things go unexpected, when there is challenges, uncertainties, I'm super creative, you know, I have so many ways that I can try out. If this doesn't work, you know, I try other things. And also, it's all about being fun, being imaginative with what we do and, you know, how I want other people to feel as well. And also in this work, you know, being a warrior is super, super important, uh, especially, you know, with the situation now it's happening um, around the world. But when we talk about warrior, you know, it's not the violent, you know, action, um, but it's, you know, through nonviolence, through love, through peace, you know, through deep understanding and compassion. So then, you know, we have the courage to stand up for what we truly believe in, but also, you know, very non-violent, you know, uh, towards those actions. And then, you know, when we um, circle out on um, one layer, you can see, you know, that um, we want to cultivate, you know, the qualities like compassion, connection, deep understanding, and then also action. And then, you know, how are we going to play out the three roles, you know, and the four qualities is through, you know, the connection with myself, and also, you know, through my community, whether it's local or global. And then in the end, you know, the ultimate planet um, on that dimension. And so the, um, the, the furthest circle is, you know, the five areas where we can take those actions, where we can manifest, you know, those qualities and the roles. We can do something you know, that's focused on nature, you know, on economy, on society, on well-being. This is from the Compass um, framework. But we add one more, which is technology, uh, which you will hear also more later in the eco-media component, because, you know, technology is just so prevalent right now in our lives, you know, in our learning. So then it's, it, you know, it, we, we have to, you know, build a right re relationship with technology as well um, in all the work we do. So this is briefly about, you know, the um, holistic and um, global citizens and change maker profile. Yeah, and it's been wonderful to actually work hand in hand with the students on this. And the students actually, when they ran the initial conference last year, um, you know, they we looked at it through the lens of these skills and, dis and these performance indicators all to be honest, what you're seeing here in these bullet points, right? The kids identifying in their workshops, some of the things that became the demonstrables of compassion, connection, understanding, and action. And it provided them an opportunity then to be very intentional, you know, in the shared aspiration of what they wanted people that were coming to this conference to walk away with. And also on our website, just as a brief side note, is, you know, some of these tools that you'll see, and the Ivy's gonna share some of these links as we go through, you know, there's a toolkit for future now skills that a lot of the workshops that the kids ran in the initial sessions centered on skills that you see here or workshops that you see here. And then also there's a change maker action plan model that goes through again with kids starting with, you know, what's in your heart, for example, right? And getting the students and the learners and, and any participant into thinking sustainably, right? Both on the inside and outside to eventually start looking at what is action, what are some things that we can do with our service clubs, with our learning in our classroom and so on, and also reminding ourselves of the importance of local partnerships, right? And then that goes into futures thinking protocols and so on, where the kids then are able to really look forward. This is something I just ran in the International School of Lausanne recently, where the kids are now identifying what it is that this sort of future now change maker needs to be, what they look like, and then directly applying that to some goal setting and profile traits that they wanted to amplify inside their different community clubs, you know, and you can see, you know, they're using futures thinking about where they want to go, who they want to be, and then we help them to roadmap that so that they can have a really meaningful and successful year. And that's pretty much our change makers program. So we would love to see you, you know, in at Frankfurt in, uh, 
November. And then also it's going to be connected to the Frankfurt Changemakers Conference this year in March of 2023. So one of our goals in that space is also to allow you and your students to come back to that conference. So you as an educator can kind of follow alongside the students as they're planning for this conference this year, which is going to be more outward facing in Europe, and then also bringing your students to experience uh, that event in March, which is going to be, I think, quite fantastic. Um, another thing that's coming up, this is going to be in the winter at the Inner Community School of Zurich, is Empathy to Impact. And Empathy to Impact, basically, you know, in a nutshell, is our sort of design process for enhancing, you know, your unit design, your when you, you're designing learning experiences, and it's just giving you some tools and some ways of thinking, specifically around the four questions you see and the four words that you see, right? is this idea of care, aware, able, and impact. And the cool thing about that is when you, when you get the students, whether again, if they're using this to design their own projects or we're using this to sort of take a meta look at what's going on in our units, right? We can start to you know, embed a deeper purpose. And this could be something as simple as an SDG, right? But we also, this is a great spot where we might look at social justice standards, or we might look at principle of harmony with nature, or we might look at a whole holistic well-being domain. And that idea of like giving ourselves some pathways to really add a level of, of care, empathy, purpose, that heart component. In the aware section, we get into a space where we're talking about, you know, how do we get our kids to be more credible in the way that they're doing their research? Right? So a lot of our research skills, for those of us that are MYP teachers, for example, our, our research skills here around media literacy, around interviewing or data literacy, how do we understand you know, intercultural competence in the way that we interact with diverse communities? These things come out in here, including our literature. Right, These, This comes out in a lot of the awareness piece. What's fun in the ABLE section right, is, again, this is where the magic happens with whether it's your criteria, whether it's your standards, you know, whether it's opportunities for interdisciplinary connections, those skills, the, the dispositions, and that even the content knowledge, right? Where is it in this process or in this unit experience, this learning experience, these things come out, right? Where are the students demonstrating? Where am I doing my mini lessons on these different things? And so on. And then lastly, like we talked about, you saw a brief picture of this just a minute ago, is what is action? Right? How do we take, if we're doing persuasive writing, right? how might we turn that into publishing something like a podcast or a debate? Right? If we're doing something that's built off of intercultural competence, let's, let's bring in some, some people like this is Salva Dute from A Long Walk to Water, right? but let's get into our communities to meet people of, of diverse backgrounds and the type of ways that we can build more experiential learning, community partnerships and authentic action into our teaching and learning. And again, you can see here, this is just some examples of the interactive nature of those workshops. And what teachers walk away from this workshop with, and the reason we're doing it at Inner Community School of Zurich, is their entire PYP, after one day, now you, they use empathy to impact across the PYP as a way to start planning their units in this way. And then it allows us, after we sort of get this, again, this sort of meta empathy to impact model, we can get into the weeds a little bit more and decide, you know, how much, you know, student agency is in that space, where do we want to do some guided inquiry, et cetera. And again, here's a great example of what that might look like. This is from a middle school unit where that's, you know, using mathematics and design in particular, you know, volume and area. And then they, you know, doing some research in the space of tiny houses, right? And we see again, where we care about responsible consumption and climate action. Right? We're getting the kids to go interview architects. Right, We're getting uh, you know, videos and how they're unpacking the different videos on YouTube, what's credible, what's not, critical media literacy, and so on. Right, We've got design standards and mathematics standards together in this space. And then they actually hosted, they printed them in 3D, and we did a future house expo that went outward facing to the entire community with great, great, great success. And in this case, they tied their transformative learning goals to the approaches to learning. And that became the ways the kids that were sort of self-reflecting. So for example, on critical thinking, that they were self-reflecting on the way that they were kind of assessing their learning through the process. So it's a really, it's a really simple and powerful, you know, means of, of really enhancing learning. 
you know, here's a here's an example. I'm not going to get in the weeds on this, but this is completely interdisciplinary at Singapore American School. And the question was around facing the future, you know, futures thinking, how do different, you know, areas or subjects look at making a prediction of the future, right? Dystopian literature, for example, or visionary fiction, right? Data, big data, and so on, right? Pulling that together then actually in an artistic way where they hosted a 2050 museum, but they used all of their subject areas to sort of justify their artwork, which is extremely powerful. And you'll see lots of schools have taken on ways of different models, how they represent empathy to impact. But if you're to come with us to the to the workshop in at Inner Community School of Zurich in the winter, you'll be walking away with the tools and, and the ideas and the thinking of how to sort of reimagine your units in this way. And um, yeah, it's really exciting work. And the last piece I just thought was really fun to show you is we've got some partnerships now going where the kids are actually designing the learning experiences through empathy to impact with their teachers alongside one another. And the reason that's been really important to see is, you know, the teachers often get into the space and they don't always realize what the students already are bringing to the table, right? Like leveraging their, the knowledge they're bringing in, leveraging, especially the technological skills. And it's amazing to see the kind of the, the mind open up and the heart open up when they're working alongside each other to sort of design where they think their teaching and learning can go in a unit. This was a unit on brain science and social media. And you know the kids came with a lot more understanding of that topic than the teachers imagined, and it was it was just fun to witness. Eco Media, Ivy, do you want to talk a little bit about where we're at with this program? Um, before I move on to Eco Media, uh, I know you know we've been talking yeah. and stop, so I would like to uh, you know pause here, so you know you as you've been listening throughout the way, you can reflect on, you know, the empathy to impact we just introduced and leave your comments in the chat and let us know, you know, what's in the framework of empathy to impact that stands out to you. Um, or, you know, you, we can just take like one minute, you know, to breathe and then continue on. Thank you for doing that. So let's do that. Let's put that question in about empathy to impact, like Ivy, you just did. So comments on empathy to impact, what stands out? Do you have any questions in particular about this learning model? And, um, and then we'll start back up in about a minute or two. Rima, I really like that point. And I think that's something we noticed when Inspire Citizens began was reminding ourselves to come back to that heart component. You know, a lot of times, even when we work with pre-K or the youngest, you know, students or the, or, you know, teachers in elementary, we talk through the lens of um, heart, head, hands, right? So it's what's in your heart, right? That we care about, right? And often then sometimes we'll even jump to hands and think a little bit about what do we want to do, you know, with that. And then we use the sort of the headspace to connect the dots. You know, who do we need to think like? You know, so if I care about nature and I want to start a garden, we need to think like a botanist, right? Or we need to think like a soil expert, or we need to think about like a farmer or bring in some of the, the gardeners, right, from our campus community, et cetera. And that can be a really also a very simple framework, you know, almost like an empathy to impact 101 through the lens of heart, head, and hands. And like you mentioned in STEAM. And you know that's just such a great way to take the steam work to that that next level, right? So that's a really really great comment. Thank you. 
Okay, I think we can move on. Uh, please, you know, feel free to uh, interacting with us in the chat if you don't find that too distracting for you. Uh, so now we move on to Ecomedia. Uh, Ecomedia, um, you know, is, is another pathway um, for the ego to eco, right? So when we talk about Ecomedia, think about ego media. So what is ego media? You know, I think I would, I would um, define, you know, most stuff we see on media um, nowadays as ego media. Why? Because, you know, it's, it's like, you know, do, do, do those information or the news, you know, or the stories that we, we see, we consume, spark sense of connection, hope, joy, um, you know, deeper and wider understanding of the things that I know and, and I don't know, right? Does it make me feel more empathetic towards, you know, people who might be very different from me? Or is our media doing the work, you know, to, uh, you know, in short, is it, is it to divide us even more? Or is it helping us, you know, to, to connect closer um, with each other? You know, does this spark joy and hope, you know, empowerment um, and then, um, you know, wider sense of consciousness and understanding? So, you know, this is a starting point of um, eco-media. And, you know, when we apply that into schools, you know, it's very much about, you know, how can we um, help our kids, you know, to learn through media literacy, right? Creative thinking, writing, reading, you know, media making and all that, but with the purpose of eco-media. So then, you know, the media we consume and also we produce, it's not to generate or, you know, to amplify the ego mindset, but rather, you know, to open up more for us to connect better with ourselves, you know, with our community and also with the planet to increase, you know, the sense of well-being um, among us. And here, you know, is an see that our kids going out, taking photos, you know, enjoying nature, um, but also, you know, eco photography uh, being one uh, of our uh, one of the eco uh, media program. It's not just about the nature genre, right? Because you know we can see nature in everything. We can see nature in our hands, you know, right? In our architecture, in our everyday object, and very importantly, we can see na nature in people in our local community. So this is, you know, how we design. Uh, the eco photography is through the seven modules, uh, which we, uh, you know, have the nature focus, uh, architecture focus, and also community focus. So it's very also um, easy, you know, for the educators to combine that with different units, you know, with different projects. You can take it many ways as you can go, right? So here is a perfect place, you know, for an educator to, to take up that artist role and mindset, you know, to move on with the learning experience that we have designed for you. And then the second page, right, uh, let's have a look at um, these um, conversation um, cards. Let me pick one maybe. Okay, so what are you most afraid of? What has been the happiest moment of your life? And, you know, how often do we have such conversation with our students, you know, with our colleagues, uh, with our neighbors, um, even with our family. Um, and so, you know, this is out of the blocks an uh, eco-media program that we have created. Um, and the inspiration is from a Baltimore-based uh, um, podcast team. Uh, you know, they are good friends of um, Inspire Citizens. But, you know, basically we have adapted, you know, the out of the block spirit mm -hmm. into our classroom, you know, so for our students to empower them, you know, to go out into their neighborhoods, right, to interview people, you know, to learn about, you know, the art of deep listening, generative conversation, uh, the art of, you know, follow up questions, you know, and how to think like a journalist, how to think like a media production, uh, 
you know, producer, right? And then in the end, you know, it's all about to understand um, people and, you know, their surroundings deeper. And this is one example, you know, from, uh, from the community project, you know, where the students were sent out to interview uh, the elderly community. And, you know, just to ask them about some life, um, life tips, and then, you know, make it like a poster, you know, and then those materials can, can be exhibited, you know, on campus um, and made into, you know, like brochure and catalogs, you know, to inspire even more people. And we are in the process of, you know, setting up our uh, eco photography uh, online gallery. So, you know, hopefully by then you will have a glimpse, you know, of, of what does it look like in our classroom and with our students. Um, and in the end, you know, you can see this man, you know, very peacefully and seems, you know, enjoying a lot sitting in nature. And, and you know, because we got um, the feedback quite often that, you know, uh, people say that they find the activity of listening is actually very mindful and very healing, especially, you know, listening to nature sounds. But then, you know, actually, you know, um, there is so many interesting things happening right now with acoustic ecology, you know, like the art and the engineer of, you know, soundscape. Um, like, you know, you can use some device to record, you know, the sound of a tree, right? How do trees, you know, what sound do trees, you know, make when they, when they connect to other trees, you know, and how, how does the sound like, you know, when the leaf is drinking water, Right, so all of this interesting and modern technology that can allow us, you know, to, to make the invisible visible, right? So we are uh, developing, you know, the acoustic ecology uh, program at the moment um, with the same aim, you know, to encourage our students and educators to connect um, and have a deeper relationship with nature through listening. And you know, through sound engineering, through music, etc. Um, yeah, and um, the other one, you know, we haven't uh, really talked much about is the debate forward. And um, I know that you know, in our schools, many students are keen on debate club. Right. And usually, you know, when the students debate, they get so excited. Sometimes, you know, can be violent verbally. Right. And it's always about, you know, I want to convince you. Right. And my view is the only right view. So then if that's a purpose of debate, um, is that really healthy or, you know, does it respond to the division that's already been very serious running in the world? And so, you know, what if we debate to reach um, consensus? You know, what if we debate to co-create mutual understanding to move the issue forward? So then, you know, we, um, we, we also design uh, the debate forward program as part of our Ecomedia uh, programs. So here, you know, you can see the four options on, on the screen. And we would like to um, get your feedback, you know, which one or, you know, the few of the programs here that interest you most, you know, as an educator. And uh, in the chat, I will send a few links uh, uh, through which you can find out more information about our Ecomedia program. There is one uh, very beautiful interview uh, with our with one of our uh, eco photography summer camp uh, participants. Uh, she's a she's a teacher based uh, in the in the states. So, guys, again, let's use the chat to just kind of pinpoint an area of interest in these eco media programs. Um, knowing that when with the chapters workshop that's coming, what's really exciting about it is it's going to be very hands on. You're going to have an opportunity to work through all of these different sort of um, channels, if you will, and we're going to then also be sort of book bookending that experience with a really deep dive into critical media literacy, you know, in ways that we help our students to interpret media and to create media, like Ivy said, to move from eco, excuse me, ego to eco, through 
channels of, you know, like the ones you see here, with then the opportunity for us as a network or as a, as a greater ecosystem to almost have like, you know, eco media member stations around our classrooms and schools where the kids can share share their work with one another. So there's a there's so many interesting possibilities here. So really excited about the work in this space. Yeah, regarding, you know, environment in the third teacher, um, I always believe, you know, nature is such an amazing teacher who has so much to offer. And also, you know, it's so creative because it teach us um, in, in such a creative way, right? Not just through words, uh, but through all the manifestations and creations in nature, through seasons, you know, through the life cycles. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it, nature can really, you know, teach us a lot if we know how to listen to the teachings that can be very, very beneficial. Yeah, and Ivy, those of us that teach through conceptual understandings, you know, ideas like diversity, oneness, cycles, adaptation, like you mentioned, and looking at nature first as a way to sort of learn more about ourselves. Uh, we've we've seen through things like this eco-photography program how powerful that is and how that really does resonate with the kids, especially then as they move into uh, the architecture, the community, and the portraiture photography. All right. So we're going to share at the end, we'll share a handful more links that we can put also on the chapter's website and in the notes. Um, for the sake of time, I just want to be kind of brief with this because this is actually, um, it's exciting because this work is actually really uh, in real time, right? So what's going on with the work that you see here is we've been having some really exciting partnerships going on with schools where we look at what is the implementation you know, design the roadmap if we're looking at holistic global citizenship as that through line that I mentioned at the beginning of this webinar. And you can see here, you know, there's what we're, what we're going to be putting out in about a month is actually a discovery tool that you and your schools can go through to look a little bit at where you're at in these four key components in this move towards holistic global citizenship school wide. I'm going to show you a different visual here. It gives it a little less busyness so that we can kind of make sense of it today, right? And, you know, ostensibly what it is, is we, you know, what is it that we're articulating across the school or in a division about holistic global citizenship? So if we went back to that nested eggs model from Frankfurt International School, having that shared language and shared understanding so that then we can start to look at, again, the implications of those things. So in that case, you know, a great example is FIS being a PYP school, but not having MYP in the middle school, what are the implications with that kind of language that we're presenting in that nested egg model, right? How do the ATLs connect with that? Do the ATLs become performance indicators to bring out the articulation of global citizenship, right? And then the next piece obviously is that professional learning component. Right? How is it that we're building capacity right inside the systems of the school so that global citizenship doesn't disappear if a teacher, for example, disappears? And we're still stuck sometimes, myself included, where we've worked at schools where you know you're you get very passionate about this work, but it doesn't necessarily stick into sort of that, you know, the really the culture of, of the school. So the capacity building piece, and this is one of the reasons we partnered with Shonal is it provides a space to really develop these, you know, very meaningful professional learning experiences that help us to build capacity on all levels of the school, right? We build capacity with the students, we build capacity with the educators, we also in this level build capacity with the whole school, you know, even in, the, you know, sometimes this works directly with administrative teams, right? But again, ideally in this process, all voices, all of the diverse voice, voice, vo voices are involved. And then lastly is that piece that's very important, right? How do we get into the implementation stage where we see what's going on on the ground? We're collecting evidence, we're collecting stories, we're sharing that communication forward. We're, we're communicating it in the way that we report student learning so that then we're always being flexible and agile with our mission and vision in this space so that we can go back and we can you know, continue to evolve. Because again, we know that the world is constantly changing and we have to you know, be willing to adapt in that space. And, and part of that is that idea, you know, back to design thinking, 
is as we iterate and we refine and we reflect, we're constantly evolving as global citizens. And that's, you know, one of the foundational, you know, elements of what it means to be a global citizen. And we do have on our site, we have some examples of what this looks like. This is Cohoa School in Cartagena, Colombia. And again, it's one of those pieces where um, you can see how this process shows up in very personalized ways. Right? So again, if you were to come to this work with chapters and Inspire Citizen, we can get into the idea that you know, whether you call it service learning, whether it's a global citizenship program, et cetera, right? We can really work with these models to take, you know, your personalized and customized approach and language and see what works in your whole school approach. And then we can set forth on some strategic planning to make it happen, right? So this is really exciting work. And like I said, we're going to have this discovery tool coming out in the next about six weeks. And we'll definitely make sure if you're on chapter's mail list, that you have access to that when it's on our website. And uh, yeah, by the end of this year, once this really gets rolling, we're gonna be very excited to invite you to the, the collaborative work we're doing with chapters in, in this endeavor. And Ivy, the last thing that we wanted to talk about today was the Explore the Learning Beyond series of um, panel discussions and conversations. Would you talk about that briefly for us? Yeah, so this idea uh, initially uh, uh, came from Shono because, you know, she's very, very passionate about um, diversity, you know, how can we be more inclusive uh, to, you know, to hear more voices, you know, to understand more different standpoints, to make sure, you know, that when we uh, work as an educator, we are inclusive enough. And so, you know, we thought we, we, we want to, you know, play around with, with, with the idea learning beyond. And we want to invite, you know, people from um, all sorts of backgrounds, not just educators, right? So people uh, like economists, well, new economists, you know, people like, um, you know, very provocative thinker uh, and, you know, student voice, you know, young people, uh, Etc. We want to, you know, host a very rich, uh, a, you know, a series of very rich conversations uh, and very interdisciplinary, uh, you know, type of uh, conversation and discussion to 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 try to reimagine, you know, the, the following topics like, you know, what if we be, you know, we can go beyond the status quo, right? How about beyond success and failure? you know, beyond, you know, our media feed, you know, the hegemony, you know, the economic growth, right? And beyond classroom, you know, how can we reimagine our schools and education in the future? So, um, you know, we are still in the process of planning um, the series of webinars and, you know, inviting speakers, and we will make sure that you know, all the information uh, will be on chapter's website you know, once um, the program is set and very, very look um, you know, forward to, to, to having you there you know, to join those conversations, you know, hope to inspire you more as an educator so we can all take part you know, in reshaping and reimagining our future of education. So I guess that's that's all yeah. for so Shona. We yeah. thought maybe just because we know that we splashed a lot of you know information on the page here, so we're wondering just we're going to go through guys one more time just the those kind of title slides just to make sure you we again see how these things are interconnected. And I want to first again say thank you. First of all, thank you to Ivy because just awesome to continue to collaborate and work with you and this the work that you've been doing with Inspire Citizens is absolutely fantastic. And Shono, thank you for also seeing the holistic nature of the work we're doing in, in the global citizenship space. And I think it's again important that the teachers that are here and the educators that are here, you know, remember that there is that idea of we're doing it with the kids, right? We're doing it with the educators, we're doing it with the administrators, we're doing it with the parents and those whole school components that fit together. And there is overlap there, right? That can really transform the culture of a school towards making, you know hopefully us better people on the inside, but especially also the world a healthier and, and better place on the outside. And again, we have the Ego to Eco event coming up in November at Frankfurt. 
specifically focusing on student leadership and change makers programs. We have the Empathy to Impact Design Sprint coming up at the Inner Community School of Zurich in the winter, where we'll be enhancing and redesigning unit and learning experiences for kids that build in greater care, aware, able, and impact. We're going to be having eco media events in the second semester. And Ivy talked all about that idea again of what does eco media mean in terms of producing, getting kids to interpret and create media that makes the world a better place and makes us feel more connected. And we're also going to be working with anyone that's interested in piloting and prototyping the work we're doing in the whole school roadmap space and just a really exciting possibility. And of course, that last piece that Ivy just mentioned, there's going to be an amazing panel series and webinar series on learning beyond and the future of education. And um, I'm just excited to be a participant in that and, and listen into the, to the great work that Ivy and Shonal are doing in that program as well. So Shonal, thank you. That was a lot, but it was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And thank you, Ivy. This was brilliant. This I, I've always just loved the work Ace by Citizens does. And uh, it uh, it kind of put everything, consolidated everything together and the kind of let everybody know this is what we're doing, what we are doing. And uh, so, yes, I hope, I know there's a very small group of people, but I know it will go out there. We've had a lot of mails from people saying that it's not the uh, it's middle of the night for us. So, but please do write to us. Ivy's put in links to follow um, the Inspire Citizen Workshop and and the mailers and the, and stuff that we are doing in um, at, at chapters. And please look out for the Learning Beyond series. It's something which is very close to me, and we're just trying to put it together. It's, it's just taking its own sweet time, but I'm quite sure it will be fine and up and about by next month. And thank you, Ivy, and thank you, Steve, again, for being here, and thank you all as well. So if I could pop in for 30 more seconds, we just yeah. talked, one thing that we talked about in our sort of Inspire Stories space, and Chapters is also great about sharing this type of work, but do know that we do have a, a wonderful podcast that actually is interviews of kids. Uh, Scott Jamison from our team does an amazing job interviewing kids from around the world. As you can see, he dives into the voices and stories of those students who own their learning and impact their communities. So we use empathy to impact as a way to frame these discussions. And also we have a vignettes page on our website that I think, again, we talked a lot about what it's like to get on the ground and see empathy to impact, to see eco media, right? To see what a whole school transformation looks like. And we have over 50 stories at this point from around the world. And also there is a mailing list if you wanna sort of stay on top of all of those things, that's also a good place to start. But our website has a lot of things you can check out, you know, get yourself a cup of coffee and, and dive in and, and don't hesitate also to send us any questions. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at InspireCitizen1, which is also a great point that can be a hub to get you to all of these wonderful things that we've been able to to plan for the year and hopefully you'll be involved with. So Shonal, thanks so much again. And that was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ivy and Steve. And we hope to see you soon. <laughs>